In this video, we'll continue looking at Unit 7, Natural Selection, and in this video, we're going to look at population genetics, 7.4, as well as variations in populations, 7.12. So as a start, let's remind ourselves, what is evolution? Evolution is the change in the genetic makeup of a population over time, or change in the gene pool. Natural selection is the most famous mechanism of evolution, but there are other causes of evolution as well. There are five total mechanisms, natural selection being one of them. What are all five of those mechanisms? The mechanisms of evolution are mutation, gene flow, natural selection, non-random mating, and genetic drift. We're going to talk about um, each of these other than natural selection in this video. So we'll start with mutation. Mutation is a random process that can introduce new phenotypic variation. It's important to remember that natural selection can only act on the variation that already exists. So mutation is an important driver of change and diversity because it introduces those differences in the first place. The next mechanism of evolution we're looking at is gene flow. Gene flow is simply interbreeding between populations. And so you can get a change to a population if new genes come into the population. For example, the population on the left there shows that all of the beetles um, are green. If you have members of a different population come in, um, that can change the uh, gene pool of that population. It's also important to um, sort of link this back to speciation um, and recognize that populations with significant gene flow will never speciate because those genes are going to keep mixing up. The next mechanism of evolution is non-random mating. So when individuals in a population are um, sort of selectively breeding with members of a population with a certain trait, um, even if it's not sort of thought out, um, this can result in evolution. So for example, in this picture is showing sexual selection, where that brown male beetle has a higher fitness, higher reproductive success than the green male beetle. Next mechanism of evolution is genetic drift. Genetic drift is random changes in the gene pool. In this case, the random occurrence is somebody stepping on some of the beetles and that killing um, sort of an unequal, um, an unequal group of those traits. So for example, in this case, more of those green beetles get stepped on than the brown beetles. This is most impactful in a small population. If you can imagine an infinitely large population, um, if you sort of take out a couple of members of the population, um, chances are that the overall ratio of the different um, genes is going to remain consistent. Whereas if it's a very small population, small changes can have a big effect. There are two types of genetic drift that you need to be aware of. What are they? First is the bottleneck effect, and the second is the founder effect. These are similar in that they are causes of um, getting down to a very small population. And again, it's the small populations that are impacted by these random changes, this genetic drift. So in the case of a bottleneck effect, it's as if you take a bottle full of all different colored um, marbles or beans or something, and you shake it out, and not all of them can come out. Only a few make it through. So in this case, the bottleneck event is some environmental catastrophe that kills off a large amount of those frogs, and the surviving population does not have the same ratio of genes in the gene pool than the original population. And then even as the population rebounds, it's still going to have the diversity represented by those few individuals that made it through that bottleneck event. The founder effect is sort of similar, but it's not a catastrophe in this case. Um, it's just that only a few individuals make it to a new location. So um, maybe it's a new island. In this case, it's showing butterflies. And those new founding individuals, um, because it's a very small group, probably don't represent the alleles, the genes that you saw in the original population. Reduction of variation in a population can increase differences between populations. So in this case, um, we see some colorful shapes representing different alleles, and those two populations, the one on the top and the bottom, are identical at first, but then over time, change happens. So in the top one, we get more and more of the red allele. In the bottom, we get more and more of the blue allele. These might just happen randomly, but over time, these differences can build up and cause differences between the population. If that builds up enough so that those two populations um, can no longer breed, interbreed, and create viable um, fertile offspring, then you would have a speciation event. But we'll get that into this in the speciation video. 
So to remember these five mechanisms of evolution, mutation, gene flow, natural selection, non-random mating, and genetic drift, um, there's a really great um, way of remembering this um, that was um, a TED-Ed video, but it was through um, uh, Paul Anderson, who does Bozeman Science, and talks about remembering all of these mechanisms as like the five fingers of your hand. So I recommend that you watch those videos. Next up, let's talk about variation, um, because it's really important to recognize that all of these um, all of these examples that we talked about in terms of change of a gene pool, we're looking at um, an example of these beetles that were either green or brown. You might notice that these beetles in this model also vary in size. Um, almost all models in textbooks and in videos as well show very clear variation that's easy to see visually, so often color-based. But I think it's really important to know, to deeply understand evolution, that most variation you can't see at, um, you know, just by glancing at a population. So describe at least one type of variation that might exist in a popula population of beetles that's not depicted here. I, there are just infinite answers, so I'm not going to be able to give them, give you all of those. But keep in mind that phenotype includes anatomy, physiology, and behavior. So for example, a beetle that is sort of um, more active, maybe goes out even when it's a scary situation. Um, even beetles can have sort of stable personality traits. Um, so that type of behavior, that trait, um, can be acted on by evolution. Now let's move on to uh, 7.12, which is um, looking at, um, we'll start, we're going to be looking at biodiversity. So the question is, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity, very simply, is just the diversity, the differences you see across um, areas of living things. This can be at three different levels. So we can talk about genetic diversity, is the differences in genes within a population. Species diversity is looking at the number and variety of species in a particular spot, as well as ecosystem diversity. How many different ecosystems or habitats are within a given region? In this unit, we're focusing on genetic diversity. So um, evolution, remember, changes the genes in a population. Um, so thinking about how much genetic diversity exists is really important in thinking about how that diversity can change over time, thinking about evolution. What might be one disadvantage of having low genetic diversity in a population? Populations that have low genetic diversity are more vulnerable to extinction because um, through natural selection, which is, remember, one of those mechanisms of evolution, natural selection can only act on the variation that exists. So if there's more variation, there's more possibilities for natural selection um, to get a good match between the current environment and the traits in the individuals. Small population also puts individuals or puts populations at risk as well. So remember that some of those mechanisms of, um, of evolution, specifically the bottleneck and founder effect, um, can really diminish the variation seen in a population. So even though this is um, one form of or one mechanism of evolution, um, it can also set up sort of a, a disadvantage to the population if there's not enough diversity there. That's it for this unit, which was 7.4 and 7.12. The next video is going to cover 7.5, which is Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium.